Hey everyone, today we're going to talk a bit about modules. There's not much to talk about because we've already been using them. Um, so this is just to kind of go through it and more formally. Um, a module just encapsulates a unit of functionality as you might uh, wonder. So in Racket it will just be a bunch, a bag of functions. Um, it may also include constants as you, as you can imagine. Right, so maybe you could have like the height to be some number um, and you can store that in a module and load that constant from somewhere else and also fu uh, functions. So like for instance a pi, right, the value of pi could be a good candidate to be stored in a, in a constant. Uh, modules may, hi may hide uh, functions, so there's a notion of private and public functions in Racket. Um, although we're not going to cover this in too much detail or in any detail, if I recall correctly. So, uh, what else? And then each file represents a module. Yeah, so there's a close connection between a file and the module. And we're gonna, I'm gonna write a few examples just to kind of show you how to make uh, functions visible and not visible, like public and private, as you had, for instance, in Java. Um, and then we're gonna use modules just to make everything a bit more spelled out. In your homework assignment, you will see that you have by default all defined out. Uh, wait, let, let's go start. Uh, let's start it easy. So first, I'm going to create a two files. So I'm going to create this foo.racket. I'm going to create this file main.racket. So let me do code foo.racket. Okay. Close this. Paste this here. And I'm going to copy paste this. It's going to be main.racket. Okay, uh, I want to write lang racket here as well. Okay, okay, I have a copy paste issue somewhere in foo. Yeah, this is missing. Okay, let me just fix this now. So if I run this module, there's no code running, so nothing will happen. And if I run this main, I do see a function called a for C. Uh, let me write main. Okay, and now you'll see 40. And now let's try to understand what's going on. So what we see is that in the file foo that declares a module called foo, what I'm going to do is I have the usual lang, pound lang racket. And then I'm going to say in this module, so there's this provide section. And in this, what this uh, provide section is saying is that in this module, what are all the functions or constants that will be made uh, public? So will be made visible to any uh, other code that loads this module. So in this case, we're saying that it's a function called A and a function called C. Uh, sorry, uh, a variable called A and a variable called C, right? Because then a variable, a variable could point to a function or to a number, whatever you want to store there. So uh, now we use the find to bind um, values to the variables, as we all know. So in this case, for A, I stored 10, and for B, I stored a function that computes um, um, increments A to 30, right? So adds 30 to uh, A, and finally I have this function called B C that is, when called, returns B, whatever you gave it there. Okay, it's kind of boring, but that's what we have. So in this code, what we said is we want to make make this one public, public, and make um, this one public. Right, that's basically what we did. We did here, and now let's see how it's being used. The only see we the only thing we see here is that we called C of A, and that when we ran that, it got forty. So why did it get forty? Because first of all, x is ignored, so then it does b. So what is b? Is a plus 30. So what is a? Is 10. So 10 plus 30 is 40. That's why you have that. So now uh, let's kind of do something a bit more interesting. So let's do times um, x. So whatever, do it times x. Um, and here, because I passed um, a, which is also visible, it's 10. I'm doing uh, 10 times 40. 
right? But if I do two, I should see 80. Okay, that's basically what we did. So the things I want to make clear here is because we only provided A and C, B is not provided. So if I try to write um, B, right, I can do A, B, even write C, right? C. A and C, we know they are public, but B is actually private. Right? So if I try to run it, I get that B is unbound. So he's not even defined. And notice that it didn't even run. Right? So it was able to understand from this code that the variable B doesn't even exist. So you have an error in this program. So it didn't run A and, and C parts. Um, yeah, because C is, is uh, private. So if we add B here, sorry, because B is private. But if I now make B public, now everything runs. And I see A, C, A is 10. C is a procedure, right? It's a function. And B is 40 because we initialize it with 10, um, 10 plus 30. Okay, so this is basically it with regards to this. Then there's a there's a shorthand instead of saying, oh, I want to, because if you, in some cases, you want to make everything that you've defined public, and you can do that. You can just make all defined out public, and that is also possible. So now um, A, B, and C, they're all shown here and they can all be accessed. Okay, let me just write provide AC. Okay, um, so that covers it. Uh, notice, oh, one thing I didn't say, but we've been using it for the tests. You've been seeing it in the test is that um, here you write the name of the file. So if you kind of move it around, this could be a relative path. I think it could even be um, a fixed path, but it could not be a variable. So you cannot do this. I don't think you can at least. Foo to be root, uh, foo.record. And then write foo here. I don't think that will work. Yeah. Yeah, it, does, it gives you this weird error. So basically this has to be a string. So it has to be something like foo.rec. It doesn't accept like a variable. Okay, so that's basically it. That's just some small things about modules. So next we're gonna start going through the interesting parts of this lecture.